Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We're so grateful that you decided to make it a date with us today on the show. And we hope that you've had a very good day. Good evening to you, lady and gentleman. Good evening. How are you? Very well. Good evening. <laughs> See, <G -Ban. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you look nice. Good to Thank have you. How was your day? Thank you so much. Fine, fine. I heard I there's been crazy traffic in Lagos. I don't know. I don't, I've been in a place in well, Actually, yes, there has. What mm -hmm. is happening? Is it that the elections, the elections, are, do you think no, that, no. you know, the traffic, results of the traffic, elections? Traffic is synonymous with Lagos. It's a normal thing. No, no but, but they say it's more than normal. For some days. Yes, we did take uh, a break. Yeah. Uh, that's because of the holiday season with the election and all that. If there's no traffic, that's when we, it's making a news in Lagos. Not when hey. there's traffic. Ah, we look forward to the time when that will not be our story in it Lagos. It is our story in Lagos. In fact, we are waiting for that governor that yeah. will come and help us deal with the menace of traffic. Traffic is such a big problem we need to get rid of in Lagos. But we know that Lagos is not the only place. Now, traffic is not the subject of our conversation today. We're looking at the welfare of Nigerians in the diaspora. And the case study is a really sad one. Now, on Tuesday, protesters took over the notorious Omonia police station. To, dem to demand justice after the beating of a Nigerian father of two died in police custody on the 8th of February 2019. 34-year-old Ebuka, who recently became a father for the second time, reportedly died after collapsing during the brutality that started shortly after an officer demanded for his data verification. A Greek man who witnessed the assault against Ebuka in front of his shop, where he sold bracelets, allegedly shouted at the police to stop beating him, but they refused. So we're looking at a case of police brutality, which is something uh, that is not just, yeah. you know, in Greece, you know, it's something that happens in Nigeria as yeah. well. It happens in different parts of the Everywhere. world. Unfortunately, a Nigerian is bearing, you know, the repercussion of that. Yeah. Now. What, I, what shocked me about this um, story is the fact that I saw the video and I saw a lot of people tripping out to support the guy. The person that saw the police hitting the guy initially is a Greek. He saw him and he was, he alerted every other person. That's to show you the kind of uh, persons they have in Greece. It shows that it is not just a community that is highly tribalistic, it's a community that has feelings towards fellow human beings. Uh, so a lot of people will feel what is a Nigerian doing in Greece. So it will shock you to know that there are a lot of Nigerians in Greece. Yes, uh, yeah. It's a very small country in terms of population, but in terms of um, economic standard, it's a very, very big country. Is there any country that there isn't a Nigerian? And if you go to any country and you don't see a Nigerian run, you should run again. Exactly. It, shows, it shows the economy is not vibrant. Yeah, that's what it means. If you Even go to if any country. the economy is not vibrant, uh -huh. we would rather just say, you know, let me go abroad and go and relax. Uh, no, no, you know? no. There if are you, lots if, of people that. In fact, if you go to any country and you don't see an Igbo man there, my brother, I run. Uh, run. <laughs> okay. Igbos have the, the nerve to notice if uh, the economy is vibrant or if there's something. Igbo Kwenu. Uh, no, leave that one. Oh, yes. Uh, just, uh, yes, yes so I'm now let, let's, let's look at the very sad case that we have yeah. on our mm -hmm. hands the case of. This man, Ibuka, who has unfortunately passed at a very young age. Yeah. Now, we were asking, you know, uh, we had a conversation about this, and our producer was saying that, is the government doing enough to protect Nigerians in the diaspora? In the and I had another <laughs> angle. That is the government doing enough to protect Nigerians in Nigeria? I'm about Nigeria. to ask you that question. Police brutality here is on the, on the rise every day. It's so high, extremely high. And police brutality is not just a Nigerian thing. Even in South Africa. You have Nigerians being brutalized by police. Even in Ghana here, a lot is happening, you know, that we, can, mm. we, we are not even hearing of right now. So it's not, it's not a new thing, but that doesn't still make it right anyway. Having a Nigerian fall into such uh, chaos in uh, Greece is, is a sad one, and I pray may it so rest in perfect peace. And but, I, hope, I, hope, I hope our Minister of Foreign Affairs can do something about it. Well, that's one thing I was going to mention, but also I was going to say you can't try this to an American. You can't try this with an American. You can't try this with a Briton. You, you yeah. can't even, no matter what they do. I remember um, a certain case of an American that was involved in terrorism. Yeah. And, you know, their, their foreign minister came out and said, yes, he's American. Yes, we know that there's evidence showing yeah. that he actually participated yeah. in, you know, the Taliban activity. But guess what? He's an American. Because and if anything has to happen to yeah. him... It would have to be on American soil, mm -hmm. not in your the, country. The question we ask ourselves is, when it comes to Nigerians representing themselves in foreign lands, how well do we represent ourselves? What mm. is the brand Nigeria called? How mm. is it, how do people envisage when you say, I am a Nigerian? How do they see you? We, our branding is not good enough. Mm. We go out there and we do a lot of EUs in their economy, in their country, and they are not happy about it. 
You see, a lot of Nigerians, you just have to call a spade a spade. Mm. The representation out there is not good enough. But that doesn't mean there are, no, there are a lot of Nigerians out there that still go there and always at the top of their medical mm -hmm. industry, at the top, top of their educational industry. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of Nigerians there, even in Ghana here. When you mm -hmm. go to Ghana here, you see a lot of Yao boys, for example, in Ghana, not representing Nigeria well. So when a policeman out there see you, the first question they ask, are you a Nigerian? And you say yes, they become jittery and they start suspecting you that is the issue so we need to brand nigeria well we need to educate a lot of nigeria that when you travel out make sure you have something legit you're doing this greek story now that we're talking about we need to ask the question what what caused the police brutality in the first place i'm not trying to justify exactly the beating. i was about to say that I'm not nothing whatsoever justifies the killing of a man and yeah. if you think that he he broke a law in greece yeah, exactly. the appropriate thing would be to arrest, so arrest him, him yeah. and to take him before a court of competent jurisdiction yeah and not to murder him i, so. I think we should be happy that we heard about this issue happening in Greece because this is not the first time. No, no, it's only it's, it's not Definitely. the first time because actually there's actually been issues. I, I actually saw a video while reading up this where a, a Greek, another Greek man was angry that they had Greek women now marry Nigerian men. And it was like, I don't understand, we're Greeks. But, but that's, not just, uh, that's not just in Greece, you know. Even yeah. in South Africa even last year. Even in the Greece are actually xenophobic. very proud people, just like Ethiopians. No, they have, it's not really about pride. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, they have strong family values. Mm. Yeah. So it's about, the, I don't know if you saw my, my, big, my Greek fat wedding. Yeah. 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 They have strong, yes. they have a sense of community. And it's not just in Greece. Yeah. There's several other parts of the world. In my, the Middle East, for example, yeah, in the UAE. Yeah, yeah. If I, I learned, you know, that if as a woman you marry out of, yeah, you marry out of the country, you marry out of the yeah. country, you lose a lot you of your rights and your and entitlement. Wow. So they try to keep that family bond, that family values, yeah, because not, they know they're yeah. a small country, exactly. but they know they're a small community. So they don't want to lose the one that they have. Greece, they're keeping the family, the uh, resources yeah, within. In terms of population, Greece is just 11 million. Yeah. So it's possible they have that kind of value or that kind of system that Olive is talking about. Mm. Even in Kenya, my friend got back from Kenya, was it last uh, last year, and I was telling me about how Ken Kenyan men are always very harsh towards Nigerians because they feel their women prefer Nigerian guys because of our frivolous way of the way we spend money. You know, Nigerians <laughs> can be so nice. When you go to some African countries, it will shock you to know that most of them, when they take you out for a date, let's say I'm a Kenyan and I take you, you're a Kenyan lady, I take you out for a go date. Dutch. They have the system of, okay, go Dutch. 50-50. Exactly. But in Nigerian man, we have pride. You know, we have these, <laughs> you know, <laughs> our shoulder is always very high. <laughs> You know, we have that, you know, I can't take you out. Let me take you out now. I'll pay. I'll even That is another you. conversation for another day because <laughs> I know some people who would outrightly, I know someone who would outrightly argue with you that if we go out on a date, it's not your right to pay for How me. How did you miss such We people? will decide that, no, not even guys. I'm talking of ladies. Okay. That would say uh, okay. that if a guy takes them out, I know many friends that would say, TG. we should split the bills. It should be that, if, except I'm the one that says, let's go on a date, you know. Right. So, or whoever invites the other for the date, pay the bills it could be the girl the female uh, i've not done that it before could be anyway. the male. but yes it's uh, not just in greece or in kenya mm -hmm. even in south africa last year when we saw these xenophobic attacks that were sure. you know yeah, yeah, taking yeah. place all they kept saying was that nigerians are taking the opportunities nigerians are take, taking their women we are we are <laughs> it's it's just you know, and sometimes i'm not even going to make excuses for them or for us at the end of the day we just want to preach for peace uh, and then it's, it begs the question, do we, some people say Nigerians, we have this domineering aura. It's not mm. domineering. I wouldn't say it's domineering. I would say that, I'm, and this is not because I'm a Nigerian, Nigerians yeah. are charming. You find a Nigerian in a mixed crowd, Actually. and the Nigerian always stands out. Oh. I'm sorry. So the Nigerian <laughs> cannot hide. The Nigerian in you. And yeah. the Nigerian stands out positively and negatively. True. Yeah. So there's a queue. Everybody's lining up accordingly, yeah. and they're waiting for the train to come. A Nigerian will come, and the Nigerian is rushing. Oh, calm down. Everybody will get yeah. into the train. Let you know, so me, yeah. we, we always find a way to it's differentiate true. ourselves. I was in Ghana. That was I went to an event in Ghana. That was January last year. And a Ghanaian, an educated Ghanaian called me and it, we were just having a gist and he told me that uh, a lot of Ghanaians are not comfortable with Nigerians around because they just, he said he's envy basically. That's mm -hmm. telling me the truth because he likes me. Ah. He said, Nigerians come here, within six months, they have a house, they have a car, they're already doing very well. Things, an average Ghanaian that have been in that town for 16 years or 18 years have not been able to achieve. Because at the end of the day, Nigerians have, so we have this the hustling mentality, you know, spirit. spirit. You can't just go somewhere and decide and say, oh, yes, I'm going to expect you to feed me. No, you're generally insulting. It's insulting you that, okay, you have to go somewhere, not, you have to work yeah. hard. 
and you have to just, you know, be up and doing. Not, Very every, true. not every country, though. We will, we will still continue this conversation much yeah. later, but today we would have to draw the curtains on that. But our thoughts and our prayers are with the family of Ibuka. We're hoping that the Nigerian government will not allow this just be slid under the rug, you know, like every other matter that doesn't seem to carry weight. We're hoping that there would be the Greek government to be called to order and that there will be sanctions for what just happened. We pray that his family and friends, they are granted the fortitude to bear the law. To enjoy more of these our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.